Hello and welcome to my channel. This is the first video from uh, Objective Functions folder where I explain good properties of an objective function. But let me show you what is an objective function. An objective function is a function of interest that we want to minimize or maximize it over some constraint. And this a function has to have some good properties in order to uh, be minimized or maximized. And one of these properties is Lipschitz continuous gradient, which I am going to explain. And uh, this property says that there is a constant L here, and this constant L has to be greater than zero for this constant L, uh, the distance between gradients at two different points is bounded by the distance between two points. Therefore, we are uh, uh, connecting the distance between gradients at two different points and their distance of their points. And uh, also, uh, from this uh, uh, formula we can get uh, this inequality which I will explain later on uh, okay as I explained we need a, a function and I didn't explain that function should be differentiable otherwise it doesn't work because we're dealing with gradient and for the gradient function should be differential so we need a differentiable function and for that uh, differential function, uh, we have the distance between two different gradients, this one and this one, be uh, bounded by the distance between two points. And this constant is called Lipschitz constant for the gradient. And, and now uh, we need to know what is the intuition be behind this uh, definition which I explained that that means if you take two two points then in Rn these two points can be f of uh, a gradient of uh, f at x gradient of f at y so the distance between these two is bounded uh, by the distance between points x and y that gets multiplied by some capital L and you can see that uh, we can have close distance between two gradients by taking two points close to each other. That is the, the intuition behind uh, that definition and next thing is that what can we get from the above property which i will explain it in next slide well for a function that has lipschitz continuous gradient we can have uh, this inequality and what is the meaning of this inequality this inequality means that for every known point x I can uh, create a quadratic function like the one on the other side of this inequality, which is quadratic function because we have uh, distance squared and uh, that makes our function quadratic. This quadratic function is the upper bound of the function value at points uh, y. So we can bound the function at each different point y using a quadratic function. And uh, uh, let me just introduce some notations because I'm going to use them uh, from now on. These angles you see, left angle, right angle, is the shorthand notation for inner product as the product of two vectors. And uh, the two vertical lines, I mean two two vertical lines uh, is two norm and two norm is just uh, square root of uh, uh, sum of square of each component. Using these uh, notations and uh, um, 
other uh, uh, simple stuff, we are going to prove if the function has Lipschitz con continuity property for the gradient, we can have this inequality. Uh, so let's see how we can do it. Okay, we want to prove this inequality. In order to prove this inequality, I need to define a function g of t, which equals uh, some combination uh, on the arguments of f of x. So this function f of x that we have is a scalar value function, meaning it takes a point in Rn and then it uh, outputs a scalar value. However, g of t is a univariate function. It just takes a point in R and it uh, uh, outputs a another point in R. And that point in which it takes is just t. So we have t here. t gets multiplied by y minus x and uh, then we add x to that. Let's see how can we use this definition okay as i explained we have a univariate function and this univariate function equals function f whose argument is this special point why this is a special point because the all the uh, by changing t all the points that we can get are points on the line Think that passes through x and y. Let me just show you pictorially. Suppose this is x and this is y, and we have a line that passes through x and y. For t less than 0, we get all the points that are here. And for t that is between 0 and 1, we get all the points that are between x and y, including x and y. And for t greater than 0, we get points beyond y so these are uh, all the points in rn that we can uh, get by changing this t that, that is a scalar now i just want to uh, go over fundamental theorem of calculus because we want to take the derivative of g as g prime of t so uh a fundamental theorem of calculus says that h of 1 minus h of 0 equals integral from 0 to 1 uh, when the integrand is the derivative of the function. So as an example, just take h to be 2t plus 1. h of 1 is 3h of 0 is 1, and that equals to 2. Derivative of... Uh, 2t plus 1 is just 2, and the integral from 0 to 1, uh, where the integrand is 2, is going to be 2t, and this is 2. Therefore, we get the equality, and uh, we are going to use this fundamental theorem of calculus, as I explained, to calculate gt. Well, we have FTC for any scalar value function. Let's just... Uh, put g as our scalar value function so we have g of 1 minus g of 0 g prime of t g of 1 is this function i just let t be 1 so that would be f of y and if i let t be 0 as g 0 g of 0 i get f of x and then i have uh, f g as g prime i get this function so i have f prime of x plus t times y minus x and i need to take the derivative of uh, a function whose argument is vector but i don't know how to do it because it is not a univariate function it is a univariate function in terms of t however we have some vectors here and uh, because of them, we need to uh, take more steps. Okay, as I explained, we have this equality. Now we need to take care of f prime of uh, that x plus t times y minus x. And I explained that uh, we only uh, move along the direction that passes from x and y only on this line. 
and this is exactly the meaning of directional derivative so in directional derivative we take one direction and along that direction we take the derivative of the function and uh, fortunately we have a formula for that directional derivative that makes our life easier okay that handy function that i uh, explained which uh, stands for directional derivative of a function along a direction is this function this function says take the derivative of function w of z where z is a point in rn along the direction of v which is a, another direction in rn so that is simply is the inner product between gradient of w at z and uh, v so let's uh, apply this formula to our uh, function so we want to find f prime that f prime according to what we have is the directional along this direction so i'll put y minus x here and my function is going to be this function at this particular point which is z uh, in this case now i have inner product at point z which is this one along this direction so i would get that inner product if i go back and then substitute the uh, directional derivative formula that I have, I would end up with this inner product here. And uh, we need to take more steps to um, prove that inequality. Well, actually, uh, in order to get to that point, we need to uh, take some other steps. We ended up with this formula. Now, if I just subtract this inner product from both sides, nothing happens. So, and I know uh, integral from 0 to 1, uh, integral of every continuous function uh, for, uh, in terms of t, where caret is a function of t, that would be just 1. So I can just put this guy here uh, with integral and uh, once I have this, now I have integral from 0 to 1, uh, 0 to 1 dt dt, I can factor out to get this one. And uh, now let's see how can we uh, do more steps uh, so we can uh, have these two. Uh, and now, uh, as I explained the formula of inner product as the... the matrix multiplication of a and b we have a inner product of a and b c and d we can rewrite that as a minus c um, and b so this is just a transpose b minus c transpose b equals uh, a transpose minus c transpose times b and if you um uh, use the transpose we uh, get a minus c transpose times b which is exactly that inner product and in order to simplify these two terms here i can factor out y minus x in order to get this uh, uh, expression now we always know that if we have an uh, have integral and for that integral if we have some function uh, integral uh, uh, integrand we can ha have another function let's say apple uh, and this integral is greater than uh, the left hand side integral because for all t this uh, carrot is less than this uh, fruit here now what I want to do is to replace whatever I have as the uh, inner product and I want to uh, find an upper bound for that that is true for every x and y and in, in order to use uh, to find that I need to use Cauchy Schwartz inequality which says that inner product between C and D can be bounded by the um, 
uh, product of uh, two norm two norm of two vectors and that is exactly what i am doing here i just put two norm for the first term and uh, two norm for the second term so well, we uh, got closer to our uh, goal uh, a little bit perfect now we have uh, a bound on inner product that we had and that bound came from cauchy schwartz inequality it is the time to invoke uh, the Lipschitz continuity property saying that for the distance between two gradients uh, we have uh, this upper bound and now i have two gradients which is this one and this one so I have I can bound this by L times the dist the difference between two points and the one point is this one and the other point is just X. If you subtract them, we ended up with uh, uh, T times Y minus X. T can be pulled out using absolute value, but we know that T lives between zero and one. T is positive, so we have L T times uh, uh, norm of the distance between x and y so let's see what we did we bounded this inner product by the cauchy schwartz inequality and then we applied the lipschitz continuity property to get that as the the upper bound for the second norm which is all uh, uh, um, individual terms here so we have bounded this inner product by this uh, expression here and now we can do the last step let me just remind you what we had we had this equality uh, and we had this inner product we bounded this inner product by this one therefore we have inequality here and now uh, l does not depend on t this does not depend on t we can pull them out so we have integral from 0 to 1 uh, of t and that would be t squared over 2 from 0 to 1 it is just one half therefore we get this and we are done by just manipulating terms on this inequality and i will do this on next slide well we uh, had that and this inequality from the previous page just by keeping f of y on the left hand side and moving other things to the right hand side we get what we wanted for all points in our end so uh, what our takeaways the ta first takeaway is that uh, a function that has Lipschitz continuous gradient uh, can be bounded by a quadratic function like this function uh, that was the first takeaway in order to prove that inequality we uh, also learn uh, what is an inner product and what is that sign also we uh, uh, went over fundamental theorem of calculus in order to handle uh, uh, in function value and the derivative of the function also we learn ha how to find directional derivative of a function along a specific direction also in order to get the result uh, for proving that inequality i needed to use cauchy schwartz inequality and uh, by uh, 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 saying the last takeaway this video is finished and uh, thank you for watching my videos and i hope you've enjoyed this video you can support my my videos by just giving them a thumbs up and uh, it uh, will be a huge help if you share my videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. Uh, also, please let me know if you want to solve uh, specific questions um, and I will uh, address that questions for you.